Yes, this is it. This is the Red Nose Day air quality in rhyme for Red Nose Day. I'm repeating myself already. 2019. If my voice holds up all the way to the end, I'll be completely amazed. This is the screencast of the lecture, of the play, of the idea, from the sequel to the original of the first one made over 30 years ago when I was young and handsome as opposed to now when I'm old <coughs> and handsome and perhaps a bit more deluded. Okie dokie, I'm going to be talking about Red Nose Day air quality because good air is not something to be sniffed at. See what I did there? <laughs> By Rob Miles at robmiles.com at Rob Miles. Feel free to tweet. Do what you like. Hit hashtag lecture in rhyme. It's world famous, at least <clears throat> in my world. OK, so welcome to my talk in rhyme. I hope it serves to pass the time. Don't worry if it isn't funny. We're only in it for the money. Talking of money, a good way to pay for this ode is to scan our QR code. Another good way, so I think, is to follow this web link. There you go. Get in there. Pay cash. If you pay enough money, I will re-record this wearing only a tutu. OK? <laughs> Where that takes you, I have no idea. And quite frankly, I don't want to go there with you. Sorry. OK, so why air quality? This section is only important if you breathe. Breathing. I'm rather good at breathing. I've done it all my life. Perhaps I've breathed for far too long. For details, ask my wife. But having done some research, I think it's time to share a bit of information on the quality of our air. It's better than it used to be. Of that, there is no doubt. But that doesn't mean it's something we don't have to think about. I'm not really here setting out to give you all a fright. Bad air not need, need not be something that keeps you awake at night. Things aren't so bad. There is no need for you to wear a mask. But there are quite a few questions that we really ought to ask. Like how can air be harmful in ways we cannot see? If I can see across the room, is it still okay to breathe? <laughs> okay, fair enough. I'll <laughs> Close enough for me. Keep moving, Robert. OK. The nasty things out there of which you need to be aware are sized around a 20th of your normal human hair. That's around 2.5 microns, folks. <laughs> if you didn't know, that's, uh, yeah, hair is about 70 microns and a 2.5 micron particle is about uh, a 20th of that size. OK. These tiny little particles can be made from burning fires. Another common source of them is wearing out car tires. The problem with these nasties, why they aren't a force for good, is they can travel through your lung membranes and end up in your blood. Ugh. A lot of folks are doing research and trying to conceive the dangers posed by nasty things found in the air we breathe. We don't have all the answers yet. There's much work to be done, but we need to have some numbers that can drive our calculation. <coughs> Close enough. I'm going that. The numbers that are quoted in the press and on TV are not from proper readings, but made computationally. This is kind of important. If we want to inform people and change the things they do. It might be nice to get some readings for the purpose of a review. We might not use stuff as posh as those some say are proper, but as long as we are careful, we don't see this as a stopper. So we've made a few devices using sensors bought from China, just to see how they compare with sources that might be considered finer. I have a strong belief in data as a force for useful change. We need quality information before our lives we rearrange. Getting values from first <laughs> Bang. Okay. Getting values from some sensors is a way to get things going. I'll edit that bit out, by the way. Um, consequence of action is what people should be knowing. So let's build a few devices and advance the field of knowledge. With luck, we'll also learn a bit on working with technology. E. <laughs> I love this. Are you having fun? Well, one of us is. 
one of us is. I hope it's at least, well, at least one of us is. I hope that's true anyway. Okay, so measuring air quality. This section is only important if you like lasers. <laughs> That'll be in, in about 10 minutes or so. So here we go. Now we have a change. The next bit is all haiku. Easier to write. What can we measure? Pollutants, there are many. We choose particles. Particles are small. 2.5 microns across. We need a sensor. Heater makes air rise. A laser, laser, shines through the air. Particles twinkle. Diode, there he is, sees twinkles, sends signals to circuitry, detects and counts them. It's good, isn't it? Packets pass data from sensor to computer, sent via serial. Sensor makes numbers. Big numbers are not good news. Not that accurate. Maybe not exact, but good enough to work with. Show pollution spread. Now we have numbers, need to make them useful. Send them up into the cloud. Haikus are quite fun, but after a while they grate. Let's try something else. <laughs> Sensor and sensibility. Is that an Arduino in your pocket, Mr. Dashworth? <laughs> It is a truth universally acknowledged that a developer in possession of a requirement from an, an embedded application must be in want of an Arduino. It is also true that this quote did not come from sensor. Oh, ho, ho, Athy, you turn Slack off and it still, it can't be killed. Slack cannot be killed. And it still comes up with things. And that was an actual air quality post from Collective Humber who are awesome and more of them later. And now it is true that this quote did not come from censor and sensibility, but from pride and prejudice. So sue me. Actually, someone might do. That's worrying. It is also true that this font is very hard to read. So let's try this one. With apologies to Jane Austen, write a sketch from my head is badly based on when stretched on one's bed. By the sketch from your head, the developer said, use a platform that everyone knows. From a trivial care to a large code affair, the solution will be Arduinos. There's one. Love it. Close inspection reveals a low price that appeals, though it has hardly no memory at all. But it's pleasing to learn there's not just one version. <laughs> version, version, ver version ranging from the large down to the small. Look hard and you'll find something with Wi-Fi and a price you can easily afford. It's so easy to use. It's the one you should choose for your projects, both home and abroad. The Wemos excels. C++ it propels. It's one of the best of its peers. With, if with sensor it's married, data can be carried to the cloud for our policy steers. Serial data contains values MQTT chains to the cloud where the server resides. Server code can release, meaning... Oh, shut up, Alan. <laughs> Adam. <laughs> I'll do that again. Serial data contains values MQTT chains to the cloud where the server resides. Server code can release, meaning from what it receives for the users to view and decide. And of course, we could add some coloured lights and build the whole thing into a top hat because we are engineers. And in fact, I've done this and there are separate videos of that, of which I'll put links later on, maybe. So follow the data. The sensor makes serial data that is sent down a couple of wires. Then just a few microseconds later on the processor is where it resides. This is awesome. Look at that. I'll do that again, 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 again. Oh, go on. Oh, there you go. Fantastic. So the data sending data, the sensor sending data into the Wemos, and that's what that bit does. Okay. 
It then makes a JSON connection, collection that contains the things we want to send. Then over a network connection at the server, its journey will end. Are we ready? There it goes. Whoosh! Isn't that awesome? That took ages. <laughs> that took absolutely ages. I hope you liked it. Um, JSON, oh, JSON digression. Here we go. If you're not sure what JSON is, JavaScript object notation to give JSON its proper name. It's not really much complication, just a technique for values to frame. For example, the particle reading, you can see that it's given name. The value the name is preceding can be used by all systems the same. It's just easy to understand for people and computers. And that's what JSON's all about. Very nice. We now have some formatted data that we want to send into a store. We need something up there to relate to. It's MQTT that we're looking for. This took ages. Message queue, message queue telemetry transport. That's what MQTT stands for. Although I'm afraid I must report, knowing that doesn't tell you much more. MQTT is a thing with a broker that sits in the middle and gets the things that devices have spoken. Yeah, I'm okay with that. In this case, it's our sensor's text. Here it goes. Whoosh. So the sensor publishes this stuff. Okay, here we go. Subscribers can say that they want to get its message on topics they like. The broker then passes them on to the subscriber when each one arrives. Here it goes. Zoosh. See? Simple. The broker does not store the data. It just sends it on when it arrives. It cares not what the data relates to. That's down to those who publish and subscribe. So MQT doesn't care what's in the message, it just sends it from one place to another. Awesome stuff. So our data store now has the readings. We can use them to improve what we know. If it's websites we want to be seeing, then just fire up a server and go. So we now have the obligatory code bit because I have to. It's, it's a, supposed to be a technical codey type lecture, so here's some code. But don't be scared, it's all good. It's one thing just to write an ode but you need to see me run some code. This is not something I should shirk, and preferably, the code should work. I'm going to show you something cool. Don't worry, this is no coding school, but I think I should be allowed to show you some software in the cloud. A tricky bit, it seems to me, is sorting out MQTT. A broker is what we will need, our sensor readings to receive. And once our broker is in place, we'll need to have some storage space that ran on a bit, didn't it? There's lots of hosts of that, I'm sure. I'll fix it in the post. I really will. Um, <clears throat> but I like Microsoft Azure because I am a Microsoft MVP and it's lovely stuff. Other cloud servicing providers are available, but I like this one and it's my talk. So there. Azure features, there are many. Quite a few don't cost a penny. Sensor data caught and then stashed without us spending any cash. IoT Hub links to our nodes, storage tables where data goes. Capturing packets will be done by using an Azure function. Oh, I love this. You might think software needs a host or else it's just a kind of ghost. A server needs to be in place to give your code some running space. But this is now no longer true. The cloud will host your code for you and for f um, one million requests a month. Ooh, that's a lot. Just send your code into the air and where it runs, you just don't care. My function, it will do the bit when MQTT packets hit. When any reading comes about, the function runs to save it out. As glue the function does behave between remote device and data save. It works so well because it's able to write things in a storage table. Finally, we see some code. I hope it won't your head explode. It's actually a C-sharp class. We can, rep can represent a reading as. The properties that you can see are for the values that were received. A class like this is perfect for writing into a table store. Little side note, not in rhyme, here we go. A table store is just basically a big bunch of data and each element of this table it's a great big thing with infinite rows is a 
class instance in this case an instance of my air quality class so it has all these things in here and the and the partition key and the row key are kind of special but you just put those in as kind of like your your foreign key primary key type, type stuff and away you go very very nice to use very easy to use very very pleasing functional living here we go this is my code this is the function that i wrote it's something that i think of note data receives a function name it's meaningful or so I claim. This is the table in the data store. Hold data. That is what it's for. The link to the IoT hub, the connection, it is just a stub. So out of rhyme for a second because I can't do this bit in rhyme. I have a connection string. It's a great big thing which I got out of the Azure IoT hub and this maps to that setting value which is held in the server. So you can't take a look at my code and then do sneaky things to get hold of my IoT connection. Um, and so that's just a stub which links to it. <laughs> well, that makes sense. It makes perfect sense to me. So I'm going to keep going. This is the receive message thing. Holds sensor JSON as a string. We know the sensor pushes this JSON up into the cloud. In Azure function land when using it with IoT Hub, this is how the message gets sent back into your method. Hope you got that. Trace writer log. This is a log which I can fill, but my code would off the page spill. If I put the logging in, it doesn't fit on a slide. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Moving on. This is the first line of the code. Gets JSON in the message stowed. So we get the bytes out of the message, turn it into a string, because the message is just a bunch of bytes. We then whack that into a variable called reading JSON. Keep going, Robert, it's all good stuff. This is the line as the code's proceeding makes an empty air queue reading. So we now have this empty object which we're going to put stuff in. Uh, and uh, this will do that for us. This line takes the JSON we got into our in our result values it slots. So it takes all the things out of the JSON that we've got, which you've already seen that little snippet of, and it puts it into my result value. Okay, happy with that? I am. Good. This line returns the new reading to the table store it is proceeding. Because this thing is a return type of table, it goes ah ha 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 and it sends it into my air quality readings table, which is part of my Azure account. It's all jolly good. Keeping moving forwards. Okay, so it's quite a shock. It really is. A thing as small and cheap as this can power a proper networked app that's hardened against an attack and will scale for devices many. Cost at the start? There isn't any. If you have a need for IoT, this is a useful place to be. Points to make here, not in rhyme, but good stuff. This guy here is about two quid, right? So for two quid, you get this device you can put on your home network and it can push information into the cloud. You can send 8,000 messages per day for free and then run them with an Azure function. You can get a million calls of that. And tell you, you, can, you could build a really quite complicated, interesting system, which will cost you to get started mm, two quid. What's not to that, sir? That's about two dollars. <laughs> anyway, moving on. So it really is quite empowering. This is awesome stuff. So finally, connected Humber, where we're at. In days to come, when we've all got 6G, they'll speak in phrases of awe of a gang who will live on in history and smart city networking law. They live round the Humber, loved the place, but noticed the lack of a network. So they started designing and building at pace, a quality monitoring to get work. And they've been and gone and kind of done it. If you look here, you can see sensors all around. Oh, we're going to get some in the middle soon. And then we're going to start getting values. Everything's green because at the moment the air is fine. Uh, and so you can go to that URL and you can actually see this map and look at our air quality readings in real time and then go back and look at historical ones. It's awesome. I didn't build this bit, ha, obviously, but I did help with some of the other bits, which I'm very proud of. So moving on. So they're working hard and just for fun to find out how far they can get. They've learned a lot and have only begun. It's not long ago that they met. If you want to take part and learn something neat, come along to the C4DI. First and third Thursday, it's months when they meet. Come along, there's no need to be shy. 
you should do. If you're in Hull, you should. Okay, that's pretty much the end. No money refunded. I never refund money. It starts a very evil and worrying precedent. So thanks. University of Hull hosted the event. If you came to the live one, David at C4D Eagle Labs gave us some donuts. If you didn't, then it's too... <laughs> If you're on the end of a network connection in Seattle, I'm sorry, you can't have a donut. It's terrible, but that, but there you go. Final rhyme: It's not too late to donate. You can click on the, you can open up the QR code. You can go to my Just Giving page. Please give me money. I really want to wear that tutu. Um, thank you so much for watching. If indeed you're still here, <laughs> and and that's that's it. For 2019, the Red Nose Day Lecture in Rhyme is done. Bye-bye.